what are you doing here in Dubai? Well, I'm bringing the entire team over to Dubai from three different continents, uh, Central Asia, um, India, from Korea, uh, Poland, and the U.S. We're all meeting together for, um, I guess, a big um, company powwow where we get to talk in an environment that's not an office setting. Um, we get to share. Everybody gets one-on-one -on -one meetings with me. And we're also at the Blockchain Investment and Innovation Summit as well, where the whole team gets to present. So you get to see um, Veritasian and its myriad diversity. Um, not only do we have people from all over the world, three different continents, but we also have um, a wide diversity of expertise. Software engineer and developer, um, uh, CPA, forensic analysis, forensic accountant, um, macro strategist, and investor, that would be me. Uh, we have uh, operations expert in strategy, ex McKinsey, ex Goldman. And we have uh, financial, ex VP of financial crimes at Societe Generale, who's our risk manager and compliance officer. And we have uh, the acquisitions, um, VP of acquisitions from one of the largest real estate hedge funds in the world um, just joined us and he is a generalist in terms of acquisitions and analysis. So uh, A, to show off, B, to have fun. So work hard, play harder. Actually, let's turn that around. Play hard, work harder because someone might be listening, right? Uh, a great opportunity to come into the Blockchain Investment and, uh, and Innovation Summit and uh, came along specifically to see Veritasium and of course, the, of course the great speaker Reggie Middleton and uh, he didn't let me down at all. Amazing orator, incredible visionary, um, lit up the room entirely um, and I got to see the VADA first hand, got to play around with the interface, really, really compelling, um, great user in, um, interface. Well, I got involved in Veritasium a little bit by luck at the, the beginning. I was very much interested in the cryptocurrency space and this was a name that came across uh, my, my radar um, and did a little bit of research about what they were doing. Knew uh, of Reggie's background in terms of television, so liked the personality and the, and the passion behind it. That you believe in, that have strong products, have strong vision and, and a sound team and, and good, um, good methodology behind them. Um. Just getting back from doing a pre presentation on uh, the effects of blockchain on pub the public sector and um, did the keynote speech as well shortly thereafter. Um, I thought I did a very good job. I like to speak. Um, and you combine uh, uh, a desire, uh, you know, an affinity for speaking with the actual energy and drive of being involved in Veritasium number one and the blockchain industry number two. And uh, I got to express myself and I got to explain what's coming to the forefront. So I felt like I was both educating and entertaining at the same time. And I feel reception from the audience. I got a lot of questions, a lot of feedback. And I think this might be very, might, it just might be the genesis of Veritasium in this area, the UAE. Reggie, you have oh. Reggie, you have the floor. Do you need my mic? You're already mic'd up. You're... Your mic is not on. Can you hear me? Okay. Just uh, if you take the stage, I'm sure that's anyone. Okay, one more round of applause then, Reggie. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay, so I am the founder and disruptor in chief of Veritasium. Veritasium is a blockchain and smart contract startup. Basically, our mantra is we're ushering in peer to peer capital markets. So we are enabling Peter to do business directly with Paul, we're enabling Paul to do business directly with Stan. Dan to do business directly with Mustafa. That's without any trusted intermediary, without any middleman, um, without any bank, without any brokerage, without any agent. Um, it's interesting because this is the beginning of a new age in terms of uh, transactions. Um, this time truly is different. Now, I'm going to mention three words and I want somebody in the audience to remind me to come back to it. Truth, trust, and disintermediation. So I'm going to go through a short history of technology and paradigm shifts. We're going to wind up right about where we are now, and then I'm going to bring you into the products that Veritasium offers. And if you can remind me to go back to truth, trust, and disintermediation, I'll come full circle. So, and as each paradigm shift goes, um, comes, it gets shorter and shorter in terms of span. The last significant paradigm shift was the internet. Okay, and that was roughly 1993 when it started becoming popular. About 2000, 2001, it was almost indispensable. Okay, most people say that the internet was the, the greatest and the latest of the paradigm shifts. 
blockchain or other parallel ships. I'm here to tell you that it's not. It's a blockchain, okay? And the attributes are associated with the blockchain. So what we do is we take a blockchain and we write small contracts on top of the blockchain. Small contracts are a, a software coded version of a legal contract, like a contract of sale, purchase a car, or a social contract. You promise to bring your girlfriend out to a day, 8 o'clock, to a nice restaurant. But these small contracts have special attributes. They are, un they are unreachable, so they can't be broken. They are self-administering, and they are self-securing. And they execute automatically on a blockchain. Okay, most blockchains, the big blockchains, such as the Ethereum blockchain, and the Bitcoin blockchain, have never been hacked. So that, in itself, gives an uh, inherent security model that's superior to every major bank. Citibank, JP Morgan, European banks, even New York Federal Reserve. Um, New York Federal Reserve was hacked. JP Morgan gets about 200,000 hack attempts a day. Who knows how many are successful, but I guarantee quite a few of them are. So we take this guaranteed um, security model thus far, heretofore. We take these small contracts that are self executing and unreachable, and we create business models of them. These business models replicate the business models of extended banks, such as JP Morgan, Citibank, etc. Except, software code doesn't need compensation. Software code doesn't need a bonus at year end. Software code doesn't need to buy an azimuth yacht next year. Software code doesn't need to buy a mansion. So, we execute the business models of the big banks at a margin so low that the conventional um, Wall Street um, industry can't compete. Assuming we execute at the same level. So, to go through the entire business, we have a team of researchers and analysts. I'm known, if you Google my name, Reggie Middleton, or if you say, um, introduce Reggie Middleton in the video, you'll see I'm known for calling big macro trends. I predicted the fall of Bear Stearns in 2007, about six months before it collaped. I predicted the fall of Lehman Brothers, Journal World Properties, which was the second largest um, real estate investment trust in the States. I predicted the European sovereign debt crisis and named about five hundred countries by name in the order that they um, collapsed or fell. Uh, I did the slight fall of Apple, the rise of Google, the collapse of research in motion, all together roughly 100 calls. This wasn't magic, it wasn't a crystal ball, um, it wasn't luck, it was basically doing old fashioned fundamental research. So we take this popular, this forensic research analysis, and we bring it to the blockchain. So now we research cryptographic assets. Uh, most know it as Bitcoin and Ethereum, but we also do with entity assets, which are populous and basically companies that create an ICO and have a token to operate on. Right now, this is probably the hottest investment sector out. Everybody has a lot of interest in it, but they don't do old fashioned fundamental analysis. What they do is they trade, do momentum trading, or they take the top 10 um, assets in terms of uh, market capitalization which really doesn't mean much because you don't have much in terms of equipment. And they simply create an index and they sell it. Now we have hedge funds that come in and charge relatively extraordinary, uh, exorbitant prices. 3% assets in the management, 30 percent profit. Um, they're growing quickly, but it is not fundamental analysis. The only way to actually make money is to be able to count the money. So, I have them, this that five of them, they're distributed around the world, and they help create research reports. We start with the most recent scan, we went through about 450 initial coin offerings. We reduced it down to 58, that's a short list. We then reduced it again to 20, and then to 10. This is what a research report looks like. Now I'm going to pass it on as I speak, and I challenge anybody to see or to tell me that they've seen analysis at this level for anything in cryptographic universe. Now, what makes this special is the fact that the only way to, and I don't use the word predict, but the only way to tell if a company can make money is to count. So just pass this around, okay, take a look at it. And so what we do is we count the money. We take a look at uh, a prospect. That particular prospect is called Pilots. Uh, they did an initial coin offering last year, and what they do is they bring small contracts and blockchain technology to invoice factor. So if, if anybody's not familiar with invoice factor, it basically allows small and medium-sized enterprises, small and medium-sized businesses, to sell off their receivables, their sales, they get financing up front. Now, interesting business because it allows small and medium companies to finance themselves. But here's the catch. Not many investors and buyers are in the invoice factoring business. 
So when you sell your invoices, you have maybe one um, private equity fund or one or two high net worth individuals. So basically, you have to take whatever um, terms they offer. And they're usually not favorable to you. What Populous does is it takes the blockchain and smart contracts and it allows the entire world to bid on these invoices. Brings down margins, brings down expenses, drops the interest rate, creates a new asset class for investors to buy. Okay? We took this business model in the business, we analyzed it, we asked them naturally, naturally multiple questions, we researched the entire adjustable market, we calculated potential growth rates, margins, etc. So we looked at the report, you see things that you never see in the cryptographic space. You never see on the screens. You see revenues, cash flows, margins, profits, growth rates, management experience, technology, feasibility of execution, number of years in business, competitors. Okay, this is what people who will really make money, this is what they expect. But this is also what you never see. Has anybody ever seen a real research report with real financials in anything in the cryptographic space? Raise your hand. Okay, well, at least two people have seen it if you my report. So raise your hand. Okay, then. Now, Populous is one example. Populous has roughly four or five competitors in the space. So what we do is, if we think those competitors are worthwhile, we now research those competitors. And now we have um, a database of invoice factory companies. So we ask the management, the, same, the management of those competitors the same questions with the same metrics. If they come back, we create a model, and each model is custom built for that particular company. We're just getting started, but we are by far the premier research arm of the cryptographic universe. So we have the blockchain, we basically have Veritasium in terms of being the sheriff. Now, after we did this research, right, and we say this company populous, this 50 page report is worthwhile. Let's say we assume that their tokens are worth $20, okay? Populous may be trading at $2. So what do you do with that? The average investor, you know, we probably go and buy Populous, so might not even understand the report. So we created what we call the beta. Veritasium, autonomous, that, um, dynamic, interactive, distributed interactive research. Basically, we take the research, we feed it into a smart contract, that smart contract is linked to 20 other smart contracts, and they work as a machine, here's a machine, to replicate your Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan's, your uh, Mitsubishi Banks, your Morgan Stanley's, etc. Okay? It actually takes research, it goes and purchases the subject of research in the open market. You can have contracts that actually do that. Yes, it's a technological model. So it goes and purchases these assets, and brings it and holds it in the smart contract. It then allows holders of very which is our token, and our token represents prepaid fees for our products and services, or basically the key to get in. It's just like when you buy a ticket to be on a plane, the ticket represents the paid fee to be on a plane. Very represents the paid fee to get into our financial machine. The paid fee to get in the machine, which is a very token, and then you have access to the portfolio. It purchases a, um, the contents of that portfolio for you on an individual basis. And now we've taken research to the next level. Okay, now it's the research unique, comprehensive, unparalleled, no competition, but instead of just reading research or attempting to act on your, on your own, you can have a smart contract, a set of smart contracts, execute the research for you. So now it purchases populous in between the valuation bands, above the minimum price, but below the maximum price, so you don't overpay for it according to our research, and it creates a portfolio. This portfolio could be up to 99.9 years. So the Veritasium, the beta application is an investor's application. It's not a trading machine. You don't go in and out, you don't try and take your positions. You know, there's no um, term. Basically, it takes the best of the best, it gives you the crops, it gives you exposure to it. So you have Populous, you have others such as PayPal, maybe Ethereum, you have Monero, because it also researches platform entities as well. A platform, and a platform token would be a token that represents, say, uh, uh, Bitcoin, the blockchain. So the Bitcoin token, which is lowercase b, is representative of trades and travels on the Bitcoin blockchain, which is a platform, capital B. Same thing with F and Ethereum. So we pick the best of the best, we create a portfolio, that portfolio is customized for you, and not, the tokens are not available on purchase. Now you have a custom portfolio, fully vetted by a team of five expert analysts. Okay, one of those analysts has a uh, a 13 year track record of calling some of the biggest macro and fundamental trends um, today. So, what this is now, can anybody guess what industry I've just disintermediated? 
I'm going to ask you a little participation. Somebody raise their hand, or I'm going to pick on somebody. <laughs> nobody? Okay, I'll pick on you. What industry does this look like? Financial services. Excuse me? Financial services. Financial services. As a matter of fact, one financial service where the um, employees make a lot, a lot of money. Take the hedge fund, the hedge fund managers. Now, hedge fund managers do this as well. They allegedly do a lot of research. So they pick the uh, best assets, and then they make the assets go up in price. Okay? A couple of big differences. Hedge fund managers, hedge funds in general are partnership. A general partner called the GP, which is the manager, or the manager's company. Then you have limited partners called the LP, which are the investors. When you go in as a limited partner, and it's usually high net worth individuals, you know, other funds, sovereign funds, wealthy individuals, etc. They purchase the LP, and then they get what they call a lockup, with five or ten years usually. So your money has to be locked up between five and ten years in order to participate. Total lack of liquidity. You participate in the Vader, you put your capital in, you could create up to a 99.9 year um, contract, which means your capital is locked up for 99.9 years, .9 years, or one year, or six months, or three years, or whatever you choose. Now, if for whatever reason you want to get out, you simply click cancel contract, okay, and the contract will unwind, and it will either sell the tokens off for you in the market, or it will physically deliver the tokens to your wallet. This happens instantaneously. So unlike a hedge fund, Unlike any other fund, a private equity fund, a venture capital fund, etc., you now have total liquidity, number one. You also have total control, number two. And you don't have a lockup. You actually get to decide how long your capital is invested for. You get to decide the contract. This is a totally different world from the fund industry, with funds being hedge funds, private equity funds, venture capital funds, mutual funds, ETFs, etc. Big, big, big difference. How big a difference? Well, let's go on the pricing. Right now, the VEDA charges you five, a flat 5%. 5% for any exposure for any length of time. Okay, let's compare that to the typical hedge fund. 2% of assets under management. So, you invest $10 million, okay? Right off the bat, you have to pay $200,000 for that first year. You also pay 20% of all profits in the 2 and 20 model. So, let's suppose, and the tokens that do well, do very, very well. I don't know if you're familiar with the metrics, but I will use the Veritasium token. And the Veritasium token is A, a utility token, number one, okay, and B, the utility is access to the um, beta. It's not meant to be an investment, but we're going to use actual price action to give an example of what would happen if it were the subject of a, a hedge fund. We launched the Veritasium token at a dollar on April 25th, which is my late father's birthday, so it's a little sentimental. Um, Right before the launch, the price of Ethereum went up a little, so the token value went up, the token price went up to $1.60 at launch. Right now, it's trading at about $105, $110, let's say $100, $110 to round it off. So, from May of last year, from April of last year to date, which is March 19th, we're talking exactly 10,000% return. Okay, so if that was in a hedge fund, okay, 10,000% return. If you were to put uh, $10 million in, you would pay $200,000 for that year, and then $10 million times 10,000% is an awful lot, right? So what would that be? A lot of money. But guess what? Out of that lot of money, let's say it was $200 million, or $2 billion, let's say $200 million. I'm not going to do the math, let's see my weakness, right? Out of that $200 million, you also have to pay the hedge fund manager 20% of that. Okay, so they get 20% of that $200 million, which is an awful lot. Okay, so $40 million plus $200,000 up front, compared to a fat 5%. You see the massive difference in pricing? So, this is designed, like I said, to undercut the legacy institutions at the knees. Now, of course they could compete with this, right? How could a legacy institution compete? I'm going to pick on somebody. First, raise your hand. I get a volunteer, then I'm going to pick on people. How could Wall Street and the hedge fund industry compete with us? Say it again. Lower prices, right? But in order to lower prices, they have to pay less in compensation. The financial industry culture and Wall Street in general in New York and other financial centers such as those in Europe and the EU and those in London, those in Canada, those in Asia, cannot lower prices because they can't pay less in compensation. The culture demands significant payment. The financial industry, and I'm going to speak from where I'm very familiar with the U.S., is the only industry in the world that I know of where the employees actually make more than the owners of the company. 
Okay, so imagine you created, you had a startup, you created a, con a, com a country, a company, right? You're the majority share owner, you work very hard, but your employees consistently make more than you year after year, day in, day out. Between 35 and 60% of gross revenue goes to compensation. That's before paying the expenses of the company. Okay, this is industry-wide. So if the only way, and I think you're correct, that they could compete by lowering prices, but if the only way to compete with these small contracts with this software is to lower prices, and you can't lower prices without losing your employees, how do you compete? Now let's suppose one company, such as Goldman Sachs, decides, yes, we're gonna compete. We're gonna lower compensation costs so we can lower prices. As soon as they lower compensation costs, all of their star talent, which is the only inventory they have, because other capital is a tool, but the actual inventory is the human capital, or their employees. When they lower prices and lower compensation, all the star players run over to J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan says, well, I'm going to lower prices. They run over to Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley says I'm running prices. They run over to Asia, Daiwa Bank, Mitsubishi Bank. They lower prices there. They run over to Europe. So this is basically rack a mole As they're playing rack a mole we gradually take more and more of the customers. The reason we take more and more of the customers, A, we have a very unique product. B, we have a head start. And C, there's no reason for us to lower prices or increase prices. As a matter of fact, transparency is our advantage. You know, there's a, there's a commercial when I was a kid from Sims, a clothing company, and it said the educated consumer is our best customer. With us, the educated consumer is by far the best customer because they realize transparency is key. Now, I don't have a live version of the app, but if you were to click any transaction, it brings you out into the blockchain, into something called a blockchain explorer, and you get to see the path of each and every transaction. Not only the amount of the transaction, but where it went and where it currently stands. We give you 100% transparency, okay? We benefit from transparency because the more you know about the transaction, the more comfortable you feel with our product. Now, on the other side, the legacy competition has a totally different business model. They benefit from opacity, okay? So the less they know about the, tra the less that you know about the transaction as a client, the more profit they can pack into the transaction. So the fees are either convoluted or not stated, or they mix in with a bunch of other expenses. Okay, the transaction is usually closed, behind closed doors, and you don't know your counterpart. Okay, oftentimes um, costs are hidden in spreads, uh, they're hidden as commissions, they're wrap fees, etc. This is a totally different world. So I started the conversation off by saying, what, what was, you're supposed to remind me of something, what was it? What was it again? That's right, truth, trust, and disintermediation. So this is where we are now. Veritasium is the name I came up with in my sleep. Veritas, the Latin root for trust. Eum is a made up word I made for element. It's E-U-M because I think someone had I-A-M, but whatever, okay? So Veritasium benefits from truth. It, be it benefits from transparency. We are the antithesis of the legacy system, number one. Number two, trust is our business model, okay? To explain how trust works in terms of a blockchain environment or peer-to-peer -peer economy, I could be sitting here with my mother. I love my mother and I trust her. So I could do a financial transaction with her and I have no worries whatsoever because I trust her, okay? I could bring my son, who I trust, with my life as well. And I could do a transaction between my son and my mother. But the more individuals and the more entities that I bring into the transaction sphere, the less I'm able to trust each and every one and the entire transaction. Once we get to this entire room, you all look very nice, I love you guys, but I can't trust you, okay? Not even an ethical issue. I don't know you. You may have hidden credit issues. I don't know your balance sheet. Um, you may be malfeasant. I have no idea what's going on, simply because I've increased the sample size. Now, when we go past this room and think of all of Dubai, much harder to trust the participants. Go to the UAE, much harder. Now we just think of MENA, even harder to trust. Outside of MENA, you think of the Western Hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere, Okay, so what Veritasium does is eliminates the need for trust, and by eliminating the need for trust, you can do transactions with anybody, with full confidence. It eliminates the need for trust by making everybody enter into a standard smart contract. You escort the value to the, trans to the contract. Now, no party can breach it, no party can break it. It's absolutely irrelevant what your balance sheet says, what your credit history says, or your intent to defraud. Now, at that, I want to ask any question. I want to answer any questions. Are there any questions for me on any topic that we cover? Yes. Uh, 
Can you speak up, uh, stand up and speak up here? Would you mind passing the mic? Uh, sorry, what blockchain uh, is this based on? Ethereum? This is an ERC-20 token. It's, built, it's based on the Ethereum blockchain. On that note, though, we're blockchain agnostic. We use the best and the safest. So for any reason, any of its many competitors are able to do better, we simply port it over, whether it's um, EOS or you know, anything else. Sorry, any? second question. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, transaction time. Put the mic a little closer to your mouth. Yeah, right. I don't usually do this. Yeah. Uh, no transa problem. Transaction times. Have you solved that on the Ethereum blockchain? You got to say it a little loud. Uh, transaction uh, times. Isn't there like a... Uh, a crunch, like you can just do maybe five transactions per minute on the Ethereum blockchain or per hour? Not really. Actually, I think Ethereum does a little more than that, but even if it did do that, it's not relevant because remember, this is not a trading app, so latency is not an issue. You're not doing nanosecond trading. Um, you enter in a transaction, roughly between 14 seconds and a minute, minute and a half later, you um, have your exposures collected and the process goes forward. Okay? This is longer term investing. Think more Warren Buffet and less. Um, Speed boys. Okay. Any other questions? Is that it? I think you were very thorough in your presentation, Reggie. Okay. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So that was twenty minutes, I'm afraid. So okay. uh, if anyone does have any more questions for Reggie, uh, he's going to be here, I assume, for the next yes. uh, couple of hours. We'll be here for the next couple of hours. We do have a booth. Um, with samples of research, and my whole team is there to answer any questions that you have. We have eight sure. people from around the world. Do show your appreciation for Reggie. Thanks so much.